Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to make a shop system in Roblox Studio. First we're going to start off with creating some folders in the replicated storage. Create three folders. Name the first folder RES for remote events. Name the second one items. These are going to be the items you're going to spawn in to give to play, give to the player when they buy an item. And then the last one is store UI template. This is where we're going to store some of the UI, which I'm going to be giving to you guys um, for our shop. Now, the UI I'm giving to you guys is not fully finished. You're going to have to do that by yourselves. But I'm giving you guys, I'm going to link in the description the base UIs and stuff. So here we got in the starter GUI template shop GUI starter GUI all right so this is what we got template shop UI a frame and a template item UI so we have let's start with the template item UI I want to rename some of the stuff in here so we're going to start with renaming the number value right here. We're going to go with item cost. All right. Now we have this button right here. This is the purchase button. So let me just have this set at name. So purchase button. Keep in mind, you have to have everything named the exact way that I do in the video or else it literally will not work. Now you have item image. In this text label is the item description or item disk. And finally we have item name. So now we're gonna take this and put it in the replicated storage store UI template. All right, we're gonna leave that there. And now we're gonna go to the shop. We're gonna first name the frame to shop frame. Now this scrolling frame stays the same. This text button, close button, and this is just the shop label. So name it shop label. Just name the actual screen UI, shop UI. And now change this frame to be invisible. All right, that's the whole UI section of the video. Now we are going to create a part in the workspace. I'm going to name this part shop prox part for proximity prompt because we're going to put a proximity prompt in this part. Now in this part, you guessed it, create a proximity prompt. Now name this proximity prompt open shop prox. So open shop prox. Now I want you to change a few of the values. So for example, I personally like to make it so that it appears like requires line of sight. I like to turn that off so things don't block it. And generally, I, like for example, I like to turn up the whole duration and object text. Buy cool items. You don't have to do this part, but it looks better on the part. So yeah, shop. And just uh, usually you anchor parts. So I'm going to anchor this part. And that is it for the actual physical things. Now we're going to get into some of the other stuff. For example, the remote event. So go to RES, create a remote event, and name it item purchase event. Duplicate it and name this one. UI close event. These are the remote events. Now, items. For items, I have already some items um, selected for this video because I have a, another video where I made this system, but I did it from scratch and it's about an hour. So I recommend you watch that video if you really want to understand the scripts and what's going on here. So we have a bat, 
Bloxy Cola, a key, and a riot shield. Those are going to be the items you can buy in each of them. I need you to create a value, a string value. So here, uh, create a string value, name it asset ID, this right here. Then create another string value called description. And then create another string value, name it price. So the asset ID is going to be the image that you want to appear on the item when it's being listed. So remember the image, item image, that's what it's go, what's gonna appear. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave this to you guys to figure out. I already have a little template one already. And then the description. So for example, a bat takes care of bullies. How much is it gonna cost? 50 coins. That is all for that. And that's, and I just repeated that for all these. These are actually all free models, so I wouldn't recommend actually using them. Now, let's get on to the scripting. So create a script in server script service. First, we're gonna create the coin. So create a script, call it leader stats, and copy this. So game.players.player added, clone connect function player. So when a player joins the game, it do it fires this function. Now keep in mind, guys, I'm not gonna make all of the scripts. I'm not gonna make you watch all of them. But this one's a short one, so we're just going to do this. So local leader stat equals instance.new folder. So we're creating a folder. Where are we creating this folder? We'll put up a comma and we do, then we do the player. So we're creating a new folder in the player. Now we're going to do leader stats.name equals leader stats. It's important that you do this exactly the way it showed here or else it's not going to work. Now we're going to create our coins value. So local coins equals instance.new number value. And then where are we going to put it? We're going to put it in the leader stats. That's what this means right here because it's we have the class name and then the parent goes here. Now we're going to do coins, coins.value. We're going to go with 1,000. And coins.name is going to be equal to coins. Now when I join the game, it should show that I have a thousand coins. That is the first script. Now we are going to create a second script that I'm going to give to you guys. This script, I'm going to explain it. You, we're referencing the replicated storage so we can get the remote events and then we find the remote events and now we have a function if someone purchases an item. So, if the remote event is fired, it checks to see who, what player fired it, how much the item cost, and what the item is called. It runs the function with the player, the amount they're paying, and the item name. Now we have the function. So it checks to see if the player has enough coins in this line right here, line 11. It deducts that amount of coins if the player has enough. It clones the item, and then it puts the item in the player's backpack. Now if the player closes the UI here, it disappears. Very self-explanatory. To name this script server purchase handler all right now we have a few other scripts we're gonna have to deal with so in the shop UI create a local script name this local script local script client purchase handler now copy and paste this So once again, we're getting these remote events through the replicated storage. Now it's refer it's finding the shop UI in the player, and then it's checking to see what items are for sale. Essentially, it goes through um, the items and it checks the number of items. So let's say there are five items in the item folder. For each item, it's going to run this loop. So the first item. It's going to find, it's going to clone it, it's going to make the item text, so you're in the template. Whatever the price on the bat is, it's going to change that value to item cost. So item cost to value equals v.price.value, and then it does the same thing with the description and the name and the image. Then it parents it to the player's scrolling frame. 
this is essentially what makes the UI have the items you can buy. And then once again, there's also the function that fires if you try to close the interface. Now there's one more thing I believe. You can close these. I want to create a script in this proximity prompt because currently nothing happens when the player actually triggers it. So all we're gonna do is script.parent.triggered. So when something someone triggers it, clone connect function, we run a function, we get the player, and then we do player dot player UI dot shop UI. So we're getting the shop UI, and then we're getting the shop frame. And then we're dot visible equals true. There was one more script that we needed to add. And it is actually a script in the template. So create another local script. Name it purchase script. And then paste this script. Wrong script. Oh no, that was the right script. Alright, what this does is if the player presses the purchase button, it essentially fires the remote event that allows the player to buy the item. Now I believe it should work. And it works. It takes my money. I got my box of cola. I got my keys. And I appreciate you watching. I want to thank you guys. And I want to let you guys know it is important. If you guys have any problems, I would like you guys to rewatch the video and ensure that you named everything correctly. After that, ensure that you have all the scripts and those are named correctly. And then look up the issue if there is an error in your output. How do you open the output? You go to, I believe it's script. You click the output. Now in the output, if there was an error, it would appear here. I'll show you what it looks like. And look, see how it's red? That is an error. You would copy and paste the error into Google and look up what it means and it will likely tell you how to fix it. If you can't fix it, then you can join my Discord server. Please don't leave a comment that says it doesn't work without actually trying to troubleshoot it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.